this piece is just about continuing that conversation that I talked about of expanding our definition of what we is. What makes humans different than the rest of the food chain is not that we're at the top of it. When I got my first pet ever, a leopard gecko, back from the pet store, I was distressed. No, no, don't, <laughs> don't do this to me, don't do this to me. What do you mean that leopard geckos don't climb walls? <laughs> the whole freaking point of getting a gecko is so that you can send them on spy missions. I learned to love him for what he was not. <laughs> I named him Sizzler. After my favorite restaurant. <laughs> where you could get chicken nuggets in the shape of dinosaurs. <laughs> Let me tell you, there is no more inspiring a buffet item than a lump of reconstituted chicken parts that styles itself as a stegosaurus. So Sizzler was a fitting name for a leopard gecko. <laughs> a truly aspirational beast. The earthbound gecko that lives its night not as life, not as some played out green wannabe reptilian Spider-Man, but as a vicious jungle cat. <laughs> Following in the glorious tradition of the whale, shark, the cat, sh fish, the egg, plant, and of course, the horseshoe crab. The crab that dreams of being a horse's shoe. <laughs> I fed Sizzler crickets that sat in a terrarium that sat in a bathtub. So in case they somehow managed to escape the cage, they'd struggle fruitlessly against the impossibly high, slick porcelain prison walls. I'd shake the crickets up in a paper bag full of protein powder like some fucked up death maraca until Sizzler <laughs> <laughs> until Sizzler crunched in a wing or a spare leg hanging out his lower jaw like salad greens. I couldn't figure out why I was feeding my pets to each other. I had this little secret. Sometimes I'd slip into the bathroom and whoops, glance the terrarium roof and slide it a crack to grant the crickets that could climb that granite slab a fighting chance. In case they made it over, they were honorary geckos. A few of them escaped into the wall paneling where they played their tiny violins as long as they had music in their legs. Yeah. I gave Sizzler back to the pet store. I stopped eating at his namesake restaurant. I started thinking that if chickens wanted to be dinosaurs, then maybe we should allow them that privilege while they were, you know, still alive. <laughs> it was years before I came to the conclusion that you can't stop the brutal beauty of the food chain by removing yourself from it. Aww. There's no life without death. There's no way to live perfect. So flush that dream down the toilet. Anyone who's ever owned a tea kettle knows that even water screams when you boil it. Anyone who's driven a car on the freeway has committed bug genocide. Even if you're a vegetarian, your supermarket produce is sprayed with a co product called insecticide. How do you rectify that there are people dying, Watsky, and you're worried about crickets in a world not yet rid of rape and murder? You're talking beef and pig on bacon burgers when kids still beef with pigs on Hagen Burger. I'm not saying. I'm not saying we don't need to take care of us, just that we lose nothing by expanding our definition of us.
Just that we lose nothing by expanding our definition of us. What makes humans special is not our ability to oppress those weaker than ourselves. It's our willingness to protect them, to empathize, to see others and imagine what they may think, think or feel is connected to us. And no, motherfucker, it's not an excuse to dress your dog up like a sailor on shore leave. That shit's obnoxious. I'm aware that geckos don't want to be leopards and crickets don't dream of being lizards, that those are human projections onto animals that are simply out here trying to function. I do. I do, however, believe in the horseshoe crab. The crab that dreams of being a horse's shoe. And maybe you've never seen four living crustaceans glue themselves underneath the thoroughbred's hooves. Go ahead and tell me. There's no way that thin exoskeleton could support the weight of a two-ton Clydesdale, man. <laughs> Come at me, bro. I've seen it. And I believe. Brave new voices, do you believe in the horseshoe crab? I looked at that horse and I said, hey horse, nice shoes. And that horse said, I'm really touched. I didn't realize that humans were capable of feeling. You know, I'm not naive, dude. I know that those horseshoes underneath me are no horseshoes at all. Hell. Don't tell him, but he's not even a horseshoe crab. <laughs> if you lean in close, you can tell by the shell, he's actually a hermit crab, the genuine article. And I'm no horse. Bitch, I'm a barnacle. <laughs> Thank you very much. Brave new voices!